Pollenberg syndrome. So as you might know, lateral medullary syndrome is most often secondary to occlusion of the vertebral artery, that's the intracranial part of the vertebral artery, or posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Posterior inferior cerebellar artery is also known as spica, which is a branch of the vertebral artery. So I'll start by drawing the lateral medulla. So we'll start with drawing the medulla and we'll take it from there. So let's start here. best artist but this is what the medulla a cross section of the medulla may appear Practicing the brain stem syndromes, it's important then that you practice drawing the cross section of different parts of the brain stem and try to label the different structures in different parts of the brain because that's how you will learn that what happens when there is a structural abnormality in that area. So there are typically six structures that are involved with lateral medullary syndrome or the Wallenberg syndrome and I'll draw the structures uh, using the red color. So first you have the inferior cerebellar peduncle that's involved. This is the inferior cerebellar peduncle, the one in the cross section. And when the inferior cerebellar peduncle is involved, it gives you ipsilateral ataxia ataxia and problems with coordination or balance on the epsilateral side. Okay. Number two, you have the vestibular nuclei involved. I'll use the green color to show to highlight the vestibular nuclei. You have the vestibular nuclei somewhere here. And when the vestibular nuclei are involved, it gives you vertigo nausea and in some cases vomiting so when as you've seen here there was involvement of the inferior cerebellar peduncle which gives you ipsilateral ataxia there is involvement of the vestibular nuclei which can give you vertigo and nausea then there is involvement of the sympathetic descending sympathetic fibers. So you have the descending sympathetic fibers here, and this leads to a Horner syndrome. So on the same side, you have sympathetic dysfunction leading to Horner's syndrome. And with the Horner syndrome, the patient gets meiosis, which is smaller size of the pupil on the affected side, and you have ptosis. Okay, so number four, then you have involvement of the nucleus ambiguous. So we'll draw the nucleus ambiguous here. So nucleus ambiguous is involved, and this leads to dysphagia dysarthria
So dysphagia means difficulty swallowing. Dysarthria is the slurring of speech. Then the other structures that are involved are the spinal tract and the nucleus of the fifth nerve. So you have the spinal tract and the nucleus of the fifth nerve that is involved. So that spinal tract and the nucleus of the fifth nerve and that leads to ipsilateral decrease in pain and temperature. So decrease pain temperature that's also on the same side that is affected and number six let's choose a different color here so we'll choose a dark green color you also have involvement of the spinothalamic tract the spinothalamic tract and this leads to this is the one thing that is contralateral so it gives you contralateral uh, let me just fix my spelling here contralateral decrease in pain and temperature So as you can see here, when a patient with when a patient has a lateral medullary syndrome, this portion of the medulla is involved, the one that is highlighted here. This is the portion of the medulla that's involved. And there are six main structures that are involved. So you have the inferior cerebellar peduncle that gives you ataxia you have the vestibular nuclei that are involved that give you the vertigo, nausea, vomiting. You have the sympathetic fibers that are involved that gives you the Horner syndrome. You have nucleus ambiguous involved which gives you dysphagia and dysarthria. You have spinal tract and nucleus of the fifth nerve involved which give you gives you ipsilateral decreased pain and temperature on the face and then you have the spinothalamic tracts involved which give you contralateral decrease pain in temperature in the contralateral side of the body so six structures involved six set of symptoms lateral medullary syndrome is more than that there are other there can be other symptoms but those are relatively uncommon some patients can get hiccups some patients can have problems with their smooth pursuit and saccades what is not involved with lateral medullary syndrome are the pyramids. The pyramids are over here. So this is the area where you have the pyramids and this is where you have the corticospinal tracts and are in the pyramidal region. And since the corticospinal tracts are not involved, corticospinal tracts, let me just put in a big mark here, are not involved and that's why a person does not have contralateral weakness or uh, hemiplegia or hemiparesis. Thank you, that's it.